Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey folks, Andrew from 1A Auto. I've got a 2004 WRX here. We're gonna put some performance rotors on it and pads. You can buy these both. Uh, the set for the front from 1AAuto.com. I'm gonna show you how to install them. It's pretty straightforward. If you're doing just regular brakes, it'll do the exact same procedure. I'm gonna use the special lug nut tool. These wheels use an aftermarket lug nut. Normally this would be a 19 millimeter uh, lug nut but instead I'm gonna use the special tool for it and loosen the lug nuts while the vehicle is on the ground. Put a socket on the breaker bar here and just loosen them all. And then when it's, they're all loose, we can raise and support the vehicle. You can use a jack and jack stands. We're gonna use the two post lift to raise the vehicle. With the vehicle raised and supported, I'm gonna finish taking off the lug nuts. You can use the socket that fits them. I'm using the special socket that comes with these lug nuts. Once I take it off, then I'll get to the last one. I'm gonna hold on to the wheel and make sure it doesn't fall off. And then I'll remove the wheel and tire. To start, I'm gonna begin loosening these uh, caliper slide bolts. There's one on the bottom here, one on the top. Now, I am gonna end up replacing this caliper uh, during this video. Uh, it's not gonna be covered but you will notice that it'll change to a new one. I will show you how to reuse this if you're going to. The other side of this car had a caliper that was locking up, so we replaced the other side with a new one. So I wanna do the same this side to make it even. But we'll start with a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench and loosen up these bolts here. Put those bolts aside. We can reuse them. Work this caliper off of here. Might need a pry bar. Those, those have come pretty far out. So actually, those boots have ripped. So this caliper needs to be replaced. Now the reason why those came out so far and ripped is because the other side caliper had seized up. This one was doing all the work and it pushed the pistons out and it really wore these pads down. These pads are thinner than the other side. But for now, I'm gonna hang this up out of the way. So I'm gonna pull these pads out. get to replacing these pads and rotors. And I'm also gonna throw a new caliper on here. Now, if your caliper was in good condition, everything was working, everything's worn evenly, you could 100% reuse your uh, caliper and you wouldn't have to remove any of the hydraulic lines or anything or bleed your brakes. All right, so one thing to check, these slides are moving in and out just fine. Oh, one of them's actually ripped. So that would need to be replaced. Oh, and that one just ripped and came right out. So. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not good. This all needs to be replaced. Uh, if this, again, was all in good condition, these would move in and out just fine. Um, you don't want these boots ripped open, dirt and debris gets in here, then they can seize up. So this one's no good. All this stuff's gonna have to come off. And again, if, you, if you're, everything was work, in working condition, you could clean these pad clips up and reinstall them and then remove these 17 millimeter bolts that'll hold the bracket on. The box wrench on here. Break it free. Get the other one loose.
Now, luckily, somebody's done brakes in this car before, and they put anti-seize here. So this rotor is going to come right off. If it didn't want to come right off, there's some threaded holes here. You can put two eight millimeter bolts. You can thread them down evenly. You can push the rotor off. But this one's going to come right off without a fight. So at least that part we're lucky about. So normally, you could uh, totally reuse this bracket and these clips. These are stainless. Uh, you could leave them in here. You can clean them with some brake parts cleaner and a wire brush and a rag and just clean them up, make them nice and shiny. And you could totally reuse your pads in here. And this can go back on the car. I'm gonna replace them with a new caliper bracket because these are also ripped where these slide boots are. The boots are ripped and this stuff kind of popped right out. So the other thing you would do is you would take these slide pins out, clean them up, apply some new caliper grease, and put them back in place. Make sure they move freely, put the boots back on. But since these are torn and dry rotted, and we're replacing the whole caliper anyways, I'm not gonna worry about it, but you can, you can reuse them if they are okay on your vehicle. If you're gonna reuse your caliper, you're gonna to need to compress the pistons back in. So I'm gonna use this uh, caliper compressing tool. Pull it down from the bungee cord and slide this tool in here. This is a dual piston one. I can thread this out a little bit to help. This fits pretty tight in here. There it is, it's really tight. Once you get it moving, it goes in pretty easily. Now, you do that if you're reusing the caliper. I'm not gonna reuse it, so I'm gonna take this caliper off, but get them all the way back in. And you can release it, pull it out. But now these pistons are fully compressed and they'll accept your brand new thicker pads so you can put it over the rotor and everything. But I'm gonna replace this with a new one so when you see it in the video, it's brand new, that's what happened. Here are our original pads and rotors we took off the vehicle. Here are brand new performance ones from oneauto.com. The setup for the original style ones would be exactly the same. These have drilled and slotting in them and a zinc coating to deter corrosion. The inside pad has some uh, pins on it to help line it up. It also has the wear indicator on it. This is the outside pad. The internal vanes in this rotor are non-directional. You can mount these on either side of the vehicle. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. We're going to mount them with the vanes going forward. Otherwise, these will fit great and work great for you. Install my rotor on backwards. Oop, gonna get lined up. Take some brake parts cleaner. I'll just clean this side of it. Wipe off the excess. Install it the correct way. Just toss a lug nut on here so it doesn't flop around. Reinstall your caliper clips if you've cleaned them, or install your new ones that came with the new caliper. Something like that. They'll just pop into place. Install the caliper bracket. If you're reusing the old one, the same exact way. Line it up with the bolt holes here. Get threaded in 
all the way down by hand. Torque those lower bolts at 59 foot pounds using my torque wrench. Once it clicks, you're all set. For the same for the top one. You might need a little short extension to get it past this strut bolts. Clean the inside brake pad, a little bit of uh, brake parts cleaner. Put a little bit of caliper slide grease on the ear. Slide this up into place, Put into, the, into the stainless steel clips, just like that. Same for the outside pad, a little bit of brake parts cleaner. A little bit of caliper slide, slide grease on the ears, not too much. You don't really need to coat the back of them. Kind of just collects dirt. Let's just sit in there. Take your bungee cord out of here. I let this rest here, but you kept it bungee cord like me. So slide our caliper down, back into position. There's a couple flat spots where these caliper bolts go that match up. Push this in place, push the slide pins in a little bit. Slide it on. the bolts that go in here. You might need to move the caliper around a bit. You can use a rationing wrench just to snug them up and I will torque them. nice and freely. All right, torque for these is 27 and a half foot pounds, but I've got my torque wrench set to 27. It's close enough. Once it clicks, you're all set. You might need to use a short extension on this one. So these are the upper bolts that hold it, the caliper to the bracket. So now the caliper is installed, the brakes are installed, new rotors. Now I can take this lug nut off, put the wheel back on, put the car on the ground. Grab our wheel and tire, put it up into place. Reinstall the lug nuts, start them all by hand. I'm gonna use my lug nut tool, or you can use the socket they used and just tighten these up by hand. And then we'll torque them with the vehicle on the ground. I'm gonna to torque the lug nuts in a cross pattern. Factory torque spec, 65 foot-pounds for the wheels. I'm using the special lug nut tool, otherwise you'd use your regular socket. for any wheels you took off. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.